Welcome to Storytime from Space, a project of the Global Space Education Foundation. To learn how you can support this exciting project, please visit storytimefromspace.com. Hello. Welcome to Storytime from Space all the kids out there, whether you're in school, at home, at your local li library, wherever you may be. My name is Shannon Walker, and I'm currently on board the International Space Station, where I live and work. Right now, I'm actually in the Japanese Experiment Module. This is a module, part of the space station, that was built by our friends in Japan. In this module, we do lots and lots of research and science. But that's not why we're here today. We're here to read a book. So. Our story today is called Give Me Some Space. This is a very special reading today because our friends in Australia are joining us. It's going to be used by the Australian Library and Information Asso Association for their 2021 National Simultaneous Storytime in Australia. Is that not fantastic? It's great. So glad you could join us. Give Me Some Space by Philip Bunting. Ever since the stars were aligned to bring her here, Una has loved space. Her first step was one giant leap. Her first word was gravity. And with each birthday, Una's cakes became ascendingly astronomical. So there Una is in her crib and she's got the solar system above her, probably thinking about space as a baby. There she is jumping off the couch, one giant leap. Dropping an apple, gravity. And here are her birthday cakes, ascendingly astronomical. That means they got bigger and bigger every year. And who doesn't love a big cake? Now, after a few more laps around the sun, Una lives in a world of cosmic curiosity and intergalactic inspiration. So we see Una here sitting in her room. She's got a fish named Neil. She's got a notebook where she writes down her observations about the world. She's got posters about space, which are really neat. One of them is about astronaut ice cream, which is great because that's delicious. Una dreams of a life in space. Life on Earth is just so-so. Earth, yeah, Earth doesn't have fancy rings like Saturn. The Earth doesn't have a go-getter name like Mars. The Earth is just named after the ground. Dirt, soil, mud, yeah. And the Earth can't zip around through space like a comet. But one day, Una will become an astronaut. She will leave Earth far behind. But for now, she's an astronaut in waiting. Una very much likes being the astronaut bit, but she's not so keen on the in-waiting bit. Here's all her thoughts on the moon and the planets and Earth. Over here says, you must be this tall to be an astronaut. So for Una, it's going to take eons for her to grow that tall. But here's the good bit. Una has been industrially working on an inter interplanetary plan. Hmm. With accompanying attire, of course. She's got to have something to wear. So she's going to wear a hand-me-down snowsuit from her big cousin, Carl, and Carl's ski gloves, slightly too big, but they'll do in this case, and her mom's dusty white Uggs from 1995. They're still cool today. And today's the big day. So. Una's thinking about all her plans on how she's going to get into space, and she's decided what she's going to wear for her spacesuit. She's going to wear um, the snowsuit and the gloves from her cousin Carl. She's going to wear boots from her mom. And the best part, she's going to wear her helmet that she is using uh, Neil's fishbowl for. I wonder where Neil is. But she's using the fishbowl for a helmet. 
So today, the big day, Una will finally turn her, swap her humdrum, ho-hum life on Earth for an extraordinary, extraterrestrial life in space. Once she's packed a picnic and said so long to Neil, of course. Her mission, to find life in space. You always have to have a mission when you go into space. So she's got Neil in a plastic bag with plenty of water, probably some food. And she's built her spacesuit. She's got some hose from the shed that she used. She's got some juice bottles that she's using for oxygen tanks. And she's got some tape, because you always need lots of tape in space. And there she goes to find life in space. That is her mission. But of course, she will have to get there first. So what does she do? She actually tries three times. Her first attempt was to find, to put some mints into some soda water. That'll make some little bit of fizz, but it's not enough to get off the ground. So she didn't get very far. Her second attempt was to get a big helium balloon or a, a big party balloon and fill it with helium. So that got her off the ground some, but not enough to get into space. So her third attempt, she found a rocket, and that's what you need to get into space, a rocket. So there's Neil giving her the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, whoosh. There she goes, off into space. Leaving Earth, heading off to explore the solar system. Space was even more extraordinary than Una had hoped. There was no so-so, there was no humdrum, and certainly no ho-hum out here. She's out exploring the planets. Mercury. A year on Mercury goes quickly. One Mercury year lasts just 88 Earth days. No life here, though. Venus. She goes by Venus. Venus is the hottest planet in the solar system with an average temperature of 465 degrees Celsius. Whew, that is hot. That's way too toasty for life. So no life on Venus. Mars, have to go to Mars. No life on the red planet yet, but it is home to Olympus Mons, the tallest mountain in the solar system. Its peak is over 26 kilometers above its base. That is amazingly high. Mars, but no life. She's still looking for life. Jupiter, Jupiter is huge. Jupiter, this whopper is 11 times wider than the Earth and has at least 79 moons. Earth only has one moon. Jupiter's got 79, can you believe it? But unfortunately, Jupiter is all gas, so there is no life on Jupiter. Saturn, Saturn, pretty exciting. Saturn, no life here, but one of its many moons, Titan, has its own atmosphere. Maybe one day there'll be life there. There's Titan right next to Saturn. And then Uranus, Uranus, this pongy planet is shrouded in clouds of hydrogen sulfide. Whew. That's the stuff that makes rotten eggs stink. He you. Too stinky for life there. So no life on Uranus. She keeps going. Almost at the edge of the solar system. No life so far. Phew. Uranus was so stinky. Glad that's passed. She's thinking, am I alone out here? Did I remember to feed Neil? Maybe there is no life in space. Una's mind expanded like the universe with each new moment. Space and time seemed to stand still as she traveled further towards the edge of the solar system. Neptune. Neptune is the most distant planet in our solar system, and it's pretty chilly out there with an average of minus 214 degrees Celsius. No life there either. <laughs> Too cold. So there she is thinking about everything she's seen out in the solar system. With all this astronauting, Una had worked up quite an appetite, so she found a lovely spot, of, spot on a ring of frozen rocks and launched into her cheese sandwiches and astronaut ice cream, of course. So there she is, sitting out on some rocks. 
having our cheese sandwiches and astronaut ice cream. These rocks are actually part of the Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt is a giant donut-shaped ring of frozen rocks and ice. It's way out there. But Pluto is part of that Kuiper Belt somewhere, somewhere out there. And you know what? I've read that the center of the Milky Way tastes like raspberries. Hmm. Thanks to the compound ethyl formate. Ethyl formate, I don't know what that means. But if it makes the, uh, the center of the Milky Way taste like raspberries, sounds good to me. In the distance, something caught Una's eyes. Shining in the light of a nearby star, a tiny blue speck seemed to shimmer as if it were alive. Captivated, Una quickly packed up her picnic and set off towards it. So there she is, finishing up her picnic and seeing way, way off in the distance, a tiny blue speck. She had to go investigate. As she moved closer, Una could see the shimmering blue planet was orbiting around a tremendous loop around its star. It was going very fast. It's orbiting at 30 kilometers per second. It spins on its axis at around 1,600 kilometers per hour. Whew, that's spinning really fast. And it has one moon. It seems to be covered by a very thin layer of atmosphere, a, a thin layer of gas, an atmosphere. Could this planet support life? What could it be? Had she discovered life in space? A trillion possibilities rushed through Una's mind as she approached the spinning, sparkling sphere. So there it is, orbiting around its star. And here's Una thinking about what might have she discovered by this blue speck out there. And just like that, it came into sharp focus. The blue planet was the Earth. Suspended in space, her beautiful blue home now shimmered even more brightly than before. There she is approaching Earth, beautiful blue planet Earth. And there's Australia. In that marvelous moment, Una had made the most marvelous observation. There is life in space. We are life in space. And we are all the crew of this most spectacular spaceship in the universe. Everything we need to explore the cosmos is already on board. Fresh water, an air supply, thank you trees, plenty of room to live, learn, and to play, and to love. Lots of lovely food, especially astronaut ice cream, and fellow travelers of all species, shapes, and sizes. So Una is very excited about her discovery. We are life in space. With her mission complete and astronaut ice cream supply severely depleted, it was time to re return home and begin a new mission. She had discovered life, so she needed a new mission. We are all traveling through space right now. The Earth is our spaceship, and that's the only home we've got. This is our mission to take care of the Earth so that we can explore the universe for years and years to come. The end. So there's Una realizing what she's discovered, realizing that life on Earth is life in the universe. She's back with her fish and she's thinking about ways that she can help save the planet and keep it clean and pure. Thank you for joining me for Storytime from Space. I hope you enjoyed our story from the International Space Station. Join us again soon for another book reading or for one of our science experiments. Goodbye. Thank you for joining us for Storytime from Space. We hope you enjoyed our story today from the International Space Station. We hope you'll join us again soon for another book reading or for one of our science experiments. Until next time, we look forward to reading together again soon.